foods and calorie food calorie dense foods fuck that erase that shit hey what's going on shane it's shane hubbard fit where we teach you how to lose weight without counting calories or doing exercise you hate today's topic is all about intermittent fasting and we're going to be talking about the basics today so the very very 101 tips that you need to know about intermittent fasting and then we'll make future videos about intermittent fasting and some of the kind of the nitty gritty details when it comes down to it. So I think the best place to start with talking about the basics of intermittent fasting is defining exactly what it is. So let's start by understanding that intermittent fasting is going to be a style of fasting that is done in sort of intervals. So you have your fasting period and then you have your feeding period and it basically just repeats over and over. And the specific type of fasting we're gonna be talking about in this video is kind of the 16-8. So the 16 hours of fasting followed by eight hours of feeding. And we'll talk a little bit in, in the future about how to break that down. So later in this video, I'll talk about like if 16 hours sounds too much, then we can break that down and kind of progress your way up to something that looks more like 16-8. One thing I wanna say before I go any further about intermittent fasting, especially as it pertains to weight loss, is that there's nothing special about fasting when it comes to losing weight. Uh, when I first started intermittent fasting and when I was first doing research on it, there seemed to be this kind of underpinning idea that fasting was some kind of special mechanism that your body goes through that burns more fat than if you were to just eat a certain amount of calories every single day, and that's simply not true. When you look at intermittent fasting and why it's effective is because it creates a caloric deficit that's really simple to follow. You just completely take an entire meal out for the most part and there's you know anywhere between four to six hundred calories depending on the person and that's enough to create a deficit and start losing body fat. So you could get the same result if you were counting calories and creating a deficit that was similar or that was at least effective for you but intermittent fasting makes it easy because all you have to do is basically cut out an entire meal. And that's a lot easier for, for most of us to understand than simply you know, going, okay, well, I gotta cut this many calories out. Well, where should I cut them out? So it takes a lot of the guesswork and you know, makes it easier for you to, to do exactly what you need to do to create a caloric deficit. All right, so let's go ahead and start talking about how to get started with intermittent fasting and, and if there's any kind of preparation you need to do. And if there's any preparation for fasting that you need to do at all, it's mentally. Uh, there isn't a lot of physical preparation you have to do. You don't have to drink any special teas or drink any special drinks or, or do anything special, but I will give you some kind of insider tips as to how to make fasting a lot easier and how to get started. So the very first thing is you just gotta decide when you're gonna fast. And if you're new to fasting, it's probably best to start on something like a Monday. Maybe skip breakfast or depending on how you wanna break it up, you can also flip intermittent fasting on its head. A lot of people will sleep, wake up, skip breakfast and not eat until lunch, but I've seen it done where, um, you know, I've even had clients where they eat breakfast, eat lunch and then skip dinner and then don't have breakfast until the next day or don't eat anything until breakfast the next day. So there's lots of ways you can do it, but those are the kind of the two most popular. But yeah, just decide when you're gonna fast and just be mentally prepared to be hungry and understand that fasting is a way to help control when you eat. It's, you know, fasting is more about when you eat than what you eat. Although I will say that what you eat can make a huge difference on how easy fasting is. If you're eating a bunch of junk food and then you go into a fast, you're gonna be pretty miserable because your body's basically running on junk food. But if you eat more nutritious, calorie dense, uh, you know, foods that are balanced, then you're going to have a much easier time fasting into the next day or into the next you know, period of fasting because your body's gonna have much more sustainable energy. So I'll say that at least up front, you should be caring about what you eat and when you eat, not just one or the other. But if you're just getting started with fasting and, and maybe you already care about what you eat, when you eat can be another really big factor because remember when it comes to gaining body fat or losing body fat, it's about the total amount of calories that you consume compared to the total amount of calories that you burn. And if you're consistently overeating the calories um, in a day, you're going to add more and more body fat to your body. So what intermittent fasting does is it makes it really easy to create a caloric deficit like I talked about earlier. All right, so the next major topic we're gonna to be talking about is how many hours should you fast per day? Now this, I'm gonna basically come from the standpoint of this is brand new to you. You've never done this before. So what I would recommend is, is, is if 16 hours of fasting sounds a little aggressive or you're not really sure what to expect, start with 12 or 14 hours first. 
because that'll give you a pretty good idea. I would say that if you can fast for 14 hours, fasting for 16 and even possibly 18 in the future really doesn't become any harder. I mean, it's maybe a little bit more mentally uh, draining. Um, but for the most part, the first eight to 12 hours is usually the hardest because especially if you're used to having something like breakfast or eating within eight to 12 hours of waking up because your body is used to eating at that time. Now, something that isn't widely understood is that our appetite can actually adapt to you know how often we feed it. So if we're consistently eating, of course it's gonna be harder to go periods without eating because our appetite is used to eating at certain times, but your appetite can adjust and adapt to when you eat. So if you spend a couple of days, let's say it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and you're fasting for at least 14 to 16 hours, your body will eventually get used to that and it won't really send out those hunger hormones as strongly as it did in the past. So this can be kind of adaptive, which is really cool. And it's really nice that your body can do that because think about it this way, if you were out in you know the, the forest and you were living on your own as a lot of our ancestors did, you didn't always have an idea of when your next meal would be, especially not to the degree that we have it today. So being able to have a flexible appetite is actually really advantageous for survival. And that's really kind of where that comes from. So you will adapt. It will be difficult, especially in the beginning. You are going to get hunger pains. You are going to, it is gonna feel uncomfortable. Um, but it's something, something that's really important to understand is that hunger really isn't an emergency. Uh, especially if you're just fasting for you know anywhere between 12 to 16 hours it's not something you have to worry about you're not going to shrivel up and die and if you're a guy or even somebody who prioritizes muscle mass your muscle is not going to shrivel away they've actually done studies to show that it's usually not until i think 72 hours into a fast that your body even starts to tap into using muscle for energy so that can be really important that being said if your calorie deficit is so large meaning that you're cutting like eight to a thousand calories out of your diet right from the start there's a good chance your body is going to use some muscle mass for fuel uh, provided that you know you you carry that deficit that large of a deficit for a really long time i would recommend starting at 12 to 14 hours and once you get used to it jump up to 16 and that's pretty much where you're going to stay for the majority of an intermittent fasting protocol. It doesn't mean you can't explore the 18 or even the 24 hour fast, but if we're talking about consistency, 16 hours is really manageable over the course of you know a week or even a lifetime if you end up really getting uh, kind of into intermittent fasting, it seems to be a really good method for you. All right, so now that we've talked about how many hours you should fast, let's talk about how many days a week you should fast. Now this is also subjective based on your experience. What I would recommend if you're very, very new to intermittent fasting is to fast, you know, maybe one to three days a week or, or two to three days a week. Uh, pick, you know, on days where you're not lifting weights would probably be most preferable or not exercising would be most preferable uh, because you're gonna want those calories for your workout. We don't want performance in the gym to suffer. Uh, as a result of fasting, which we'll talk about fasting and exercise in a future video. But at the same time, we wanna create a caloric deficit pretty consistently. So again, if you're brand new, two to three days a week is probably all you need to do. And then depending on your preference and depending on what you're doing going forward, you could increase that to four, five days a week, six days a week, or every day if you really wanted to. There's really no uh, you know, upper limit that you need to watch out for. I will say this from personal experience that if you are fasting on the weekends, it might interfere with you know morning breakfast that you either have with your friends or your family. And so you, do, you don't necessarily wanna be that person at the table who's not eating because you're fasting. So I would prioritize doing it you know, Monday through Friday or whenever your work schedule is because that schedule is gonna be more consistent and then enjoying yourself, enjoying some breakfast on those, you know, weekends when you're with your family or you're with your friends or or you maybe you have kind of like a, a breakfast date that you go out with. Me and my fiance, we do that every now and then. And it's fun. And so it it's not that you have to become so religious with fasting but if you end up getting to a point where you do multiple days a week i think at the very least you know three to four is, is great if not five if you can manage that just like the amount of hours that you fast i would recommend that you progressively work your way up start with three and then add a day in here and there as you need to or as you feel you are ready to you know handle that next challenge and then when it comes to which one should you prioritize first, how long you fast or how often, it's kind of a mix of both. But in, in, in terms of like starting out, I would rather have two longer fast days than like four shorter fast days. 
So for example, I'd rather you fast 16 hours, two days a week than fast, you know, uh, 12 hours, four days a week, just because the, the amount that you're going, the amount of benefit you're probably going to get from creating a caloric deficit from 16 hours is going to be a lot easier to manage as opposed to trying to manage something like four days a week and fasting 12 hours. Uh, that being said, as long as you're keeping your caloric deficit, I don't see why it wouldn't work for weight loss. But from personal experience, it's a lot easier to completely cut out an entire meal than to think about okay, snacks and the meals that might be something that you think about in a 12 hour fasting window. All right, so the last part of this video that I wanna go over is, is some basic do's and don'ts when it comes to fasting. I'm actually gonna read off of, of my computer some of the ones that I wrote down. And it's also in the article if you wanna check that out. I wrote an entire article on fasting and weight loss, which I'll put down below. I'll put a, a little link down there so you can go and uh, read that if you'd like to. But some of the do's and don'ts, um, here, we'll, let's talk about the do's first. So I do want you to eat with flexible nutrition plan. I don't want you going to the extremes. I don't want you never eating, you know, pleasure foods or uh, always eating, you know, healthy foods. I want there to be a mix. The 80-20 rule is still a big thing here. You still want to have balance between kind of the fun foods and the, the more nutritiously dense foods. Um, pay attention to your true hunger. Okay, uh, when you're fasting, you will feel hungry and you will feel some discomfort, especially in the beginning, and that's normal. And just kind of sit with it. It's going to happen in waves. And what's really cool about uh, fasting is that it's it's one of those things where your hunger gets less and less intense as you go through your fast. So I would say probably the first, you know, eight to 12 hours is probably the most uncomfortable. And then after that, it becomes a lot less uncomfortable. So it's easier to go from like 12 to 16 hour fasts than it is to necessarily get started with any kind of fasting. Um, understand that hunger is not an emergency. You know, and we kind of talked about that earlier. It's, it's not something you have to kind of quench or to satisfy right away. It's not like, oh no, I'm hungry now, I better eat or I'm gonna shrivel up and die. That's not what's going on. Make sure that you keep your workout routine stable. One of the things that happens to you know, some of my clients and happened to me is fasting can sometimes get in the way of workouts, especially if you're lifting weights. If you're lifting weights during your, your fasting period, it can be basically feel like you're working on fumes. Now, not everyone experiences this, and I'm gonna do a future video about weightlifting and fasting, but, um, it can happen, so just be mindful of that. The other thing that's important is to adjust your fasting windows and your feeding windows based on your schedule. There's some people that would like to eat breakfast, eat lunch, and basically fast from lunch until breakfast the next day. Kind of a more traditional way of fasting is to eat lunch, eat dinner, fast from the end of dinner all the way until lunch the next day. That's fine too, but do what works for you. Okay? You don't have to do one or the other. One or the other is not more beneficial than the other, uh, so long as you're trying to keep those fasting and feeding windows practically the same, no matter when you choose to fast and when you choose to feed. Uh, another big question I get, and I'll talk about this in a future video as well, is coffee. Here's a really simple rule. Drink black coffee. That way you don't have to worry about the calories you typically put in coffee. If you don't like black coffee, you're kind of shit out of luck. Um, and we'll talk about that in a future video on, on kind of how to, how to balance that. Drink water all the same. Um, I wouldn't be chugging water during your fast. I wouldn't be chugging water at all. I would be drinking water normally throughout the day. Uh, because you're not eating anything, your pee is more than likely going to be clear sooner into your fast uh, because you're not mixing any nutrition or anything like that. So, but drink water all the same. Don't change anything with your hydration. One other thing that, to keep in mind is that you want to still manage your protein intake about the same. Now I do get questions quite a bit uh, about how much protein to eat on intermittent fasting because it seems really challenging to try to get the recommended amount of protein in a fasting protocol. And so what I like to tell people is instead of trying to do one gram of protein per pound of body weight, instead drop it down to like 0.6 or 0.8, which is a little bit more sensible. And you could definitely fit that within two meals and a snack, or even you know three small meals between your in your in your feeding window. All right, so now we're gonna talk about some of the do nots, some of the important things to not do in intermittent fasting, especially from the beginning. Because if I say this right up front, it'll be a lot easier for you to implement as you go through and, and start to practice more and more intermittent fasting. Do not eat far less calories than you need. A, a common mistake that people make when they fast is they cut out like 800 to 1,000 calories. Now that's just far too much. You're gonna have no sustainability with fat loss if you're consistently cutting out 
that many calories out of your nutrition. So make intermittent fasting one of those things where you still have a normal calorie deficit, you're just choosing when you eat, all right? So be a little bit more mindful of that. Don't force yourself to eat one gram of protein per pound of body weight if that means trying to get like 80 grams of protein per meal. It's just not necessary. I mean, you could definitely do it if you wanted to. I just don't see how it's practical as a long-term practice. So don't overeat protein just because you think you need a ton of protein in an intermittent fasting protocol. One of the cool things about fasting that a lot of people don't realize is that fasting is actually protective against muscle. So, so long as your calorie deficit is manageable and you're still eating protein, fasting is actually not going to uh, strip your muscle off of your body. It's actually protective against it. So that's a good thing. The next mistake a lot of people make is working out in your fasting window if you already don't feel good to begin with. So if you already feel lethargic, if you already feel maybe like low blood sugar or maybe even low energy, working out during your fasting window is probably not the best idea. Um, now this changes as you get more and more used to fasting, so it's not something that's necessarily gonna happen forever. It also happens to be uh, sometimes a result of poor nutrition. So a lot of times if you're eating really nutritious foods, you're getting your proteins, your carbs, and your fats from whole food sources, your fasting window is going to be a lot easier to manage because you're not having these spikes, or I should say these dramatic drops in your blood sugar throughout the, the course of your, your fasting uh, protocol. Now, if you're just getting used to fasting, what your body is going to have to get used to doing is using body fat for fuel. Right now, especially if you're you know, somewhere in the pre-diabetic to type two diabetic range, your body is basically just using uh, stored carbohydrate and blood sugar to help keep you, uh, you know, running essentially. And those drops in, in blood sugar can be pretty dramatic and, and one of the reasons why uh, it can feel really uncomfortable during a fasting protocol if you're somebody who is kind of in that uh, camp of, of people that is, that is going currently going through that. All right, the next do not tip is do not extend your fast further than you need to, especially in the beginning, unless you are really prepared for it, all right? Sometimes it can feel amazing to go 16 hours without eating, and so there's this tendency to want to go like 18 or 24 hours, and I definitely don't discourage that you know, here and there, but if you're someone who's trying to, to lift weights and trying to you know, perform in the gym and, and do your workouts, it's gonna be very difficult to perform at the same level if you're fasting for long periods of time, anywhere between 18 to 24 hours. So I would recommend just get really good at the like 16 at the most fasting hours, and then just try to improve your nutrition quality more so that way you can really fuel your workouts. The next big do not tip is do not treat intermittent fasting as an excuse to binge eat after your fast is over. This is actually something that I personally ran into and then I've worked with some people on where they get this idea that because they have all these calories they still need to eat or they think they can eat, that they need to just, or they can just eat whatever they want and, and kind of just go hog wild. And this just becomes a kind of a vicious cycle and, and really just makes binge eating something that's more quote unquote acceptable. So what I like to say is, still approach nutrition from a standpoint as if you didn't have all these calories to you know at your disposal so to speak so still eat high quality nutrition um, still eat 80 20 like i talked about earlier and try to prioritize that going along with the last uh, do not tip when it comes to intermittent fasting is uh, don't treat fasting as like this protocol where you can, once you fast, you can eat as much food as you possibly want. So shifting away from just pure quality, so eating whatever you want, to eating as much as you want, there still is a possibility that you can overeat calories, especially if you're eating a lot of processed food that's easy to overeat. So again, it's still important to be mindful of the quality and the quantity of your nutrition, even if you do have quote unquote more room for calories to eat, during your feeding window. And then the last do not tip is, do not use intermittent fasting as this protocol for creating a loophole in the calories in versus calories out thing. As I talked about in the beginning of this video, this isn't a uh, magical pill for losing body fat. It is simply just a way to create a caloric deficit that helps your body use body fat instead of the calories that you're eating 
and thus creating a caloric deficit and losing weight. All right, so that's my video today on the basics of intermittent fasting. Thanks a ton for watching. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, you can put the comments right there in the section below. Please, if you don't mind, like this video if it really helped kind of set a base for you with intermittent fasting and give you some of the basics. And then if you like my videos and you're starting to see more of them, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And that way when a new video comes out, you get notified right away. Oh, you gotta hit that bell by the way too. That's kind of the secret to getting notified. But if you subscribe and hit that bell, that way you can see more videos as they come out. And I've been doing videos pretty much every single Wednesday. So you can expect new videos on Wednesdays.